Good morning and welcome to another edition of Mama Watero Talks. This talk comes to you from a place of peace and utmost love. Ah, oh, it's been a while. It's been a long, 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 long time a while since Mama Watero was with you. So I am back. I take I tend to take breaks in between recordings because uh I mostly go with um, on how I'm feeling on the day that time when you just don't feel like recording so you're not in the mood or you don't want to post yourself you know, post content is not good content so Mama Wataro is here Mama is back oh so it's been a long time I think the last time I was recording it was very windy but today the weather is absolutely perfect behaving it's not mentioned before that I live in the UK in a place called Glasgow and Glasgow is in Scotland yes that is where mama is um, before that I lived in Nairobi Kenya for a lot of years I think about 17 years or so but I was not born in Nairobi anyway that is a story for another day today we are here to discuss to talk about not to discuss how to settle abroad when you move, so you have just relocated. Uh, let me talk about me. I have always known that I wanted to travel from a very young age. So if you grew up in the 90s, then you're probably familiar with books like Famous Five and Nancy Drew. And those are the kind of books that we read, small novels growing up from about, I think, the age of 10 or so. I started reading novels. Well, maybe earlier, I'm not so sure, but probably 10 years, 11, 12, and onwards. So I read these books, and prior to that, I grew up watching movies and watched a lot of movies. So some of the movies were very old movies. I think they were shot in the early 80s or so. Like there was uh, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. There were, you know, movies that came at the end of every year during Christmas seasons. And I was just fascinated by the world beyond. movies but I pictured myself in that environment and it was just amazing to see a different world and different people so I have always loved cultures and different cultures so I easily blend uh, with people you know I'm a people person I could say that yeah I was not always a people person but then you know I was shy at first but I grew up got over that then I am a people person, so I love experiencing different cultures and interacting with different people. So from watching those movies at a very young age and reading those books, I knew that I wanted to travel. And uh, as I grew up, I did travel. My dream to travel came true. And I traveled to several countries, like a few, not too many, but I mean about five countries. because. My first travel was in the U.S., I think in the year 2004, just after campus, and I went for a visit. It was about, I think, two weeks visit, and I was lucky enough to, to, to visit different places in the U.S., from Washington, D.C. to Atlanta, to different kinds of places, and I loved it. But it was during, I think, the beginning of the cold weather. It was not that cold, just about, I think, what we have right now because right now it's about um 11 degrees today it's chilly but it's not that cold but maybe it's because i've been here i think next month will be my one year anniversary in the uk so when i traveled to the to the us 2004 it was a bit chilly but it was not that bad i i was i was able to cope and then after that i traveled 
again to Sweden and I traveled to Australia and I traveled to Dubai and South Africa. Those really don't have like adverse weather conditions like it was just the weather was more or less like what we have in Kenya but when I traveled to these other countries with different seasons I got to experience you know just the beginning of winter or most times I travel just after winter so I did not interact with what we called the cold <laughs> or so at that point I thought it was cold so fast forward to the UK 2019 November Mamua Toro and her baby are traveling to the UK and uh, we are relocating and so i was excited about the relocation i mean like i said i'd traveled before but the maximum that i stayed in one place during travel was about three weeks so you cannot tell the culture or you know the the the, the, the kind of place or or how you adjust to a place just by visiting you must try you must be able to you must be able to stay in that environment for quite some time like a couple of months for you to understand what goes on around you and how you're gonna adjust so it's an experience it's something that you have to experience you know traveling to a place one or two weeks like i said does not mean that you have experienced a place so mama toto travels with her baby in toto we get on british airways and we got good deals by the way so we get on british airways packed up our bags after months and months of waiting for a visa in another story and then we arrive in the UK so we arrive in London and London is just one of my favorite cities in the world I love London I had traveled to the UK before in the year 2012 I traveled to London because I always wanted to go to London so I get on a flight and I go to London and then I got to experience it but it was only for a couple of days and off so this time i am back to london with the family and we arrive on one cold morning in november yes <laughs> i have experienced the cold but that was cold that was really really cold i think uh, i'm not too sure but right now it's autumn so that was the beginning of winter and it was freezing so before that i had gone to when i knew that i was traveling and i was relocating and i would arrive during the cold uh i had gone to my second hand market yes i love thrift shopping you know i mean who doesn't like a good bargain so i used to shop a lot in gikomba gikomba was one of my favorite places to go to because you know it's like treasure hunting you really never know what you're gonna get in gikomba so Mumuatoro, i'm traveling and uh, i'm relocating i'm gonna arrive in winter and i go to gikomba so i get myself a jacket because my husband was like uh I think we should get the jacket when you get here like I will have it when you get here but I was like uh-uh you know what I'm not gonna spend um, 50 pounds on a jacket when I can get it in the combat for like 300 bob so Mimi Huyo I got to the combat I hook myself up with my jacket ready I'm traveling got all my suitcases I get on that flight I arrive in London by the way if you don't know me I am a storyteller so my stories tend to intertwine I could be telling one story then i bring in another story but that's how it goes so you, you well, as the more you continue watching my motoro you will you will you'll get into the mix so i arrive in london it's a cold morning i've got my jacket from gikomba by the way when i go shopping in gikomba i always tend to look for things that still have tags on that are that are second hand but fairly fairly used or not really used i look out for those kind of clothing so i arrive in london it is cold it is cold I was not ready for that kind of cold so Mimi um, and I'm Toto my baby is adjusting you know kids you can throw them in the North Pole and they just blend in so it was cold it was cold I don't even think that jacket was helping I one of these days I'll wear it in one of the videos so that you can see it it was fairly it was warm it was warm but not that much not that much so I was cold maybe because I was coming from Nairobi in November and at that point of the year Nairobi is warm so I arrive, in, I arrive in, in London, it's cold, I experienced the cold for the first time and boy, whoa man, I was not prepared. But anyway, fast forward a couple of days in London and then we head off to Glasgow and if you think uh, England is cold, try Scotland, whoa, whoa. So we arrive very early in the morning and uh, it's about, we, land, we, we took the bus down and then we get here and uh scotland 
Glasgow is about eight or nine hours away from London. So these places, it's like two different countries. It's like Kisumu, Mombasa travel. So um, we arrive in the morning and it is freezing, freezing cold. Like the cold in London was nothing. You get out of the car and you're like, whoa, it hits. This cold hits you different. So anyway, we get in and we adjust. And me being who I am, you know, I had told myself one of the important things when you're traveling and you're relocating or you're relocating or you're going to be in a place long term, prepare, you know, prepare your mind, change your mindset because how you, how you think is going to affect how you adjust long term. So I told myself that I am here. It's going to be cold. It is cold, but we are going to tackle this cold head on, you know, congestina in the boxing ring you know, type of thing. We're gonna tackle this cold head on. We're not gonna complain. It is what it is. We are here a long time, so we might as well get used to it. So here I am, I arrive, I get, I, I sort of like, I'm coping kidogo kidogo. Actually, I had got myself two jackets <laughs> in Kikomba. So I have the spare one, which is a bit of a lighter jacket. Looking back, I think it was more of a spring jacket because it was very light and the other one was heavier. So it is cold and I am determined to get to know this place. That's another thing. One, your mindset. Two, you need to start moving around. Move around. Don't lock yourself in the house. Because when it's cold, the heaters are on in the house, you might tend to hibernate because it is warm and cozy inside. But you're not going to spend the rest of yourself indoors. You might want to move around. So here we are. As I'm moving around, I mean, the first two weeks, I think, I used to go on Facebook Live and I would just like wear two jackets. Like literally, I'd have this jacket on and that jacket on. I wish I brought those two jackets here. I could have, I could have shown them to you. So I wear my two jackets and as I'm moving around, I did not have a clue on how to move around. And uh, later on, my husband knew that I had traveled quite a bit. So he thought that I knew what I was doing. I really didn't know. But then again, I think traveling with a child is just different from during my independent travel days when I was on my own and I was just like, get on the flight and go and explore and do stuff like that. So um, I get out, I'm out and about, I'm piling on two jackets. And another thing is that if you relocate, you need to know that you will need to make the map your friend. Yes, my friend, this place, man, these places, you know, without the map, you, 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 you're basically lost. So learn to use your map. And uh, the good thing is that it's so easy to use Google map. I just type in when you're go where you're going and then directions and the bus that you're going to take, the time it's, it, it will take to arrive or to go to your destination just comes up on Google. So I did not know that. So I got out in Kenyan style. I just asked guys, oh, I want to take a bus to whatever. And then the accent, that was something else. I mean, Scottish people speak English. But if you're coming from Africa, huh? This English is a different kind of English. The accent. <laughs> so, you know, my husband is Scottish, but his accent is very different. Or because I talk to him a lot, you know, it's not as heavy. So me and my Kenyan English and my accent and my all, I ask for directions. Sometimes I really don't get what they're saying, but most, for the most part of it, it was okay. So I asked for directions to town. And then after a couple of tries, I learned that actually I can use the map. And I get going. It was cold. It was, it was windy. It was raining at some point. It was really, really cold. But I just kept going because I needed to explore. I'm an explorer. I cannot sit indoors all day. I find it hard sitting in one space. I'm constantly on the move. When I was in Kenya, I was constantly on the move. Roundy Mwenda. <laughs> the Roundy Mwen Mwenda. Yeah, that's the right term. So I'm moving around with my map. I think the first thing that I did was that I started exploring the city center. So um, because I'm not so sure what to do, like connecting or getting on the bus, then connecting on the Scottish rail, the train to the city center. So the first thing that I did was this, you know what? What I'm going to do is start by going one way, one route, like go to the end of the route, then get off the bus and explore and come back. So basically I knew the main bus station started from there. 
and then from there once i was confident uh with my one route or two-way go come back then i started exploring other places because i realized at that point that it was so easy to use the map and then with time i learned that you could actually get day tickets instead of getting one way and one way which is expensive i learned how to get a day ticket that takes you all over the place you can go wherever you want and explore the city so that's point number three keep moving around don't hibernate you know we are not here to sit in the house we need to move around if you're gonna adjust if you're gonna work if you're gonna take your children to school you need to move around and then the third thing that i did was uh at that point my daughter was four so she was not going to school school if you're a parent of a young one or children and you are relocating where do you start with school so um, i'm a very independent person so i was not relying on my husband for this information i was ready to explore and to find my way so looked around and uh googled google make google your best friend saw some schools that were in my neighborhood and then what did i do i visited some of these schools i just walked to the schools because again the map works very well uh, during those days there was no COVID, so you could do a walk-in and then just ask them you know looked at the school because it's easy to find this kind of school you're looking for when you see it physically not on photos because photos can lie so walk around look at the school scan and just get a feel you know i i i know how to tell schools that are good schools you know we have public schools here and the schools are really good but it's always easy to tell when you see the students and you can tell you can tell happy students good school so good teachers good school so found a school that i liked uh requested for an admission it had to be on a waiting list because at that time of the year you know it was really full so nailed it down with school and then another thing is that uh, you know you have to do things earlier if you're gonna look for school start way ahead because hapa you know it's not the same it's not like kenyan style where it's a walk-in pay school fees and then things just roll like that you know because things because school is free here and people tend to want their children to go to the schools in their neighborhood who wouldn't want that so you don't want to miss a chance so start early and then the other thing is comfort food <laughs> you know as silly as it sounds chakula you will need your food trust me when you start missing home or you start missing kenya you will need your staple food i don't know what your staple food is but mine is a galleon fish i didn't bring my fish with me because at that point i was overwhelmed i was not well prepared i waited until last minute and then i think i went into brain freeze and then by the time i left i didn't carry any of that yada yada but hey carry your staple food so i know one there's a lady who was traveling last week from kenya and she's from central so i was like you might want to carry your dry maize for your githeri you don't want to forget that because when you get here ha huh, honey there's no githeri for you so carry your paraphernalias you'll get the beans you'll get the carrots you'll get the cabbage but you won't get githeri so i did not carry that but lucky for me we have the african stores so hey i was able to get my gully flour with one and then when Ugali came in, I think everything else just flowed. So you might want to invest in carrying your staple food, comfort food, something that is going to make you relax and settle in easy as you're trying to find your way. Uh, so apart from the staple food, clothing, avoid carrying too many suitcases. You know, those clothes that you had in Kenya, believe me, you, you will not need them here because like where i am in the uk there's so many clothing stores some of most of them some of them are affordable and the beauty is that the sales actually work so things do go on sale yes after the season and you will get thick stuff good quality at amazing prices so watch on a zako those are some things that are of sentimental value like i brought in a lot of my african clothing that i couldn't leave behind so you know i knew i was not gonna get them here so those i came with but you really don't need much in terms of clothing just bring yourself and then uh, another thing before i forget is that uh what is it called for spouse for husbands or wives if your wife is joining you if your husband is joining you hey hey we are from a tropical environment we are not used to the cold just so you know reminder so you definitely need a uh, uh, winter starter pack 
you know, a gift bag where in this gift bag you will need, you know, your warm pajamas, like three sets of them, something very nice and warm. You will need your warm socks, extra warm socks, like really warm socks. And then you will need your, 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 your gloves. Yeah, your hands are gonna be freezing. So you will need your gloves in there, your socks, your pajamas, your scarves. You will even need your electric blanket. If you're one of those people who get cold, yeah. I had an electric blanket and that worked so well for me. It helps. I still use my electric blanket. <laughs> shamelessly that days in summer when i have used my electric blanket because i was cold and my electric the electric blanket was good investment that my husband bought before i got here so i loved that and then uh what else would be in the starter pack i think you know it's, it's just every host's obligation to do this it's one of those things that will make you settle in easy jacket you know, it's not bad to go to your second-hand market or Gikomba or wherever, get your jacket, look out for, you know, the heavy puffy jackets, depending on what time of the year you're coming. And then because when you get here, it might take some time before you learn how to get around or you know how to shop. So, you know, you might want to bring one for yourself and then something that you can use to keep warm as you look around and shop around. Because again, when you're relocating, another thing you must be aware of is that you will not be financially, you know, stable at first because you've used, you've spent so much resources and finances coming in here. So your pockets are going to be empty and you will need, uh, you know, those warm clothes when you get here to settle you in so that by the time you are making your money, small monies, or you got a part-time job, then you can get yourself you know the little bits and or pieces and things that you need for the weather depending on the weather so that's another thing so i think i've basically tackled it all and then i think one of the most important things to learn is that do not be shy to ask and uh you know try and find your, your way around your, your 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 surrounding if it is through your church but right now you know with covid churches are closed down so it's a, a little bit di di different you know a lot of people i know a lot of us africans don't like mingling with other africans when we arrive in the cities especially from our countries because you don't want wahala you know some people have a, some people are known for or they have a habit of just causing chaos and dramas and that's what you're trying to avoid so since i got here i've not been in a hurry to make friends because uh, you know i want to make good friends so there's no hurry with that i'm more missing out on friendship so that's another thing that i forgot to mention if you're a people person because like i am because i was one of those people who was always entertaining i always had guests in my house my relatives my my friends you know i love entertaining i love cooking for my friends and I just love seeing people having a good time, telling stories, listening to good music, dancing. Yeah, I love that kind of thing. So I miss hosting. When I got here, I was like, you have to change your mindset. If there are people pass on, it can be a bit lonely. But hopefully you'll have that one friend who's a good listener who will always, you know, be able to, to pick up when you pick up the call that on the other side, listening to you, chatting. Sometimes you'll be chatting for hours until you settle in because again when you get busy you will not have time to yada yada around so job wise of course everyone knows this when you really go to the west it's not that kind of party darling if you are a manager in africa if you had a white collar job things are different on the other side you need to be flexible uh, so whatever kind of job that you get you will go with that as long as you have a vision your focus you know where you're going uh, the most important thing is you want to make small cash here and there to be able to spend because you are not going to be leeching on people forever you know, people are going to get tired of you so you want to get your own job make money be flexible you're going to sweep you're going to do whatever you have to do as long as it's not crim crim any criminal activities you know care work there are all kinds of jobs in these countries but right now with covid things are changing a bit it's uh, the more people applying for jobs so it can be a bit tricky but hey you know what your luck is your luck even in the in the crisis of situations there are always opportunities like right now i think when i got here i was not working because my daughter was not in school and then uh 
you know, it's expensive to have a nanny, but with the time, I think like two or three months ago, I got myself a job, luckily through one of the parents in school, who happens to be my daughter's friend and is from Africa. So I work in a restaurant as a waitress. Yes, I am a waitress. I love my job. Sometimes I get a bit mixed up, but hey, I work as a waitress and it's a weekend job. So that's another beautiful thing about this place is that you can actually get a part-time weekend job for some hours. You can get a night job, a day job, so whatever suits your, your program. Try and get out there. Get yourself something to do. Mingle and mix in the community. Get to know people and get to know your surroundings. So that will also help you settle in. So um, I think prior to my waitressing job, I had applied for a care job and I got called for the interview. I did well, but when COVID came, you know, I got, I spoke, I, I was poked out and didn't take that job or didn't take the training. So wow, that happened. But even before that, I also got an interview for a real estate job. So there are opportunities. Just keep applying. There's so many websites that you can look at. If you're in the UK, you can look at Indeed because that seems to work most of the time. Anyway, change your mindset, adjust your mindset. You're not coming here for a managerial position. Your degree that you got back in Kenya or Africa does not mean a thing. You ne probably need to start all over again or build on what you already have, your degree. So whatever tickles your fancy, the endless opportunities, it's all up to you to go out and grab one that you feel comfortable with so i think i basically talked about everything that will help you settle in but at the end of the day the most important thing is your mindset ah oh, how you think about it oh one important thing before i forget racism yes the topic racism uh you know i'm an easy i, I believe i'm an easy person so how i tackle racism is this you are not in your country you're in a foreign land so quit thinking that you're amongst your people because even if you're in kenya you're going to be discriminated based on your tribe you know you you will go to central or you'll go to kisumu and if you're not from kisumu people are going to see you and talk to you in a certain kind of way and it's it, it is that's that's how human human beings are it sucks but it's the reality of life you're probably gonna face racism you know don't make a big deal out of it it will hurt yes but quickly move on i always remind myself that you know what i'm not from here i'm living in a foreign land with different people who probably have not seen people like me where or interacted with people like me i do not i think the best way to look at it is that expect the worst from people so that when they treat you better you will actually be happily surprised so i take it easy you know, when somebody looks at me and they try to move away or, you know, look at me in a certain way or react in a certain way, you know, I just tell myself that, you know what, they are the problem because clearly I am not. I'm in this country legally, so, you know, I pay, I'm not living on any government support, so for those who are, I still respect you, but it is what it is. You know, people are going to be racist. You will not always meet good people, but... The, the, so far, I'm grateful that I have not experienced, like, I have experienced microaggression or microracism, but, you know, I can live with it. I can live with it. I'm more in my country. I was not born here, so my expectations are not as high. You know, it's going to happen. So how you, how, you, how you go about it is what will be very important because at the end of the day, you want to maintain your mental you know good mental health your 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 your, 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 your how you are up here is very important and will determine how you cope when you relocate so i think i've been going on forever that's all from mamo and toro thank you so much for watching